Okay, boys and girls, today we are going to be taking a look at my favorite and possibly the best bushcrafting knives of 2022. Now, in this video, will we be we will be covering not necessarily brand new knives, but I did want to update this list and refresh it so that you guys can get an idea of ongoing good knives to select for bushcrafting and wilderness living in 2022. So once again, the focus on this video or the focus on the selections for these knives is it's not necessarily that they're new or that they're the best and the latest and the greatest but that a lot of these knives or a lot of these picks have great track records they've been used extensively for several years and they are a great choice to make when deciding what you're going to carry for bushcrafting purposes. So that's the kind of mindset behind this video. Now, before we jump into it, I do have a couple announcements, so let's get right into it. So the first announcement is that I did start a Patreon. If you guys wanna support the channel for a little bit every month, it definitely helps out and it helps me get a lot of the knives that I review, test, and feature on this channel. So definitely check that out if you're interested. The other one that I wanna say is that I do have a little sticker shop now and of course the channel logos are on there or the official channel logos are you can get as stickers to throw on your water bottles computers whatever you want but also probably most excitingly I decided to make some stickers that are uh, basically knives that are on the channel so one of the stickers is of the CRK Pacific of course my modified version that kind of has this rounded piece there and that's been rounded as well but I really wanted to make a few stickers of the knives that I really like it so definitely check that out if you're a sticker kind of person like me there so that little rant aside those are the announcements now let's jump into the top knives for bushcraft in 2022. So aside from updating this list, the other thing that I wanted to do in this uh, list is add a little bit more options. And I think that was the biggest thing that I got feedback from when I made that original video is that there just w wasn't uh, that many options. The knives that were shown in the video were kind of hard to get and all expensive fixed blades. So I wanted to correct that a little bit and throw in some different options. So the first one is going to be a Victorinox or Swiss Army Knife edition. And for this one is going to be the Victorinox Farmer is going to be the Swiss Army Knife of choice. Now, the So the reason why I chose the Victorinox Farmer for the Swiss Army Knife kind of category is because I feel that aside from, as it was previously mentioned in another video, the dedicated Victorinox Bushcrafter, which was a very rare limited production uh, Victorinox, which if you have one, congratulations there are very epic but aside from the Victorinox Bushcrafter the Victorinox Farmer is actually a very similar or has a very similar tool set and what I found with the Farmer is that really realistically it has everything that you need and nothing that you don't and so you have a good strong you know or maybe not strong but you have a good solid blade on this one and you also have a good long saw you also have the classic Victorinox kind of Alox framed uh or Alox handled uh, awl. And so this awl is really good. And if you have never used one of these specific awls, it will change your world. They really cut much better than the kind of mass produced cheaper awls that are on the more standard plastic handled Victorinoxes. So this one is a great, really fantastic, durable, strong uh, Victorinox. And a lot of people do ask, you know, why aren't there locking or why don't I choose locking Victorinoxes? I do actually have some that have locking blades. I just dislike them because the locking mechanism adds more bulk to the handle, less tools, and it's just overall a complication that I don't really see that necessary because when I pull out a Victorinox, I'm not going to be using it to baton. This is not a hard use tool. This is a very basic, very small uh, carving, whittling type tool. So the Victorinox uh, Farmer for me is one that I don't necessarily need so the Victorinox Farmer for me makes a lot of sense because I don't need a locking blade and I don't really want a locking blade on my Victorinox. So that's why I chose the Farmer. It has a great tool set and it's not a locking blade and it's also a little bit more durable because it has the Alox handles on it. So yeah, it also just looks fantastic. I love looking at the Farmer because it looks like such a classy tool. And of course I have my little orange lanyard on it. So that is the first choice. 
Okay, so the next one I wanted to include would be a pocket knife. Now for me, this is this could be filled by many different tools, but the one that in my, in my collection that makes the most sense for bushcrafting has to be the GEC or Great Eastern Cutlery Pocket Carver. Now, as I just mentioned with the Victorinox, the primary reason why you're going to have a pocket knife or a Swiss Army knife is for carving, doing light duty camp tasks. Obviously the saw on that farmer is not going to be the most industrial or robust. You're not going to be felling trees with it. So it's for those little camp craft tasks. And so for me, the next one, like I said, for choosing a pocket knife that makes a lot of sense is the pocket carver. Now these are not necessarily the easiest to find. And once again, there are other knives that would fit the build just fine. I just chose the pocket carver because out of my collection, this is a well-proven, well, has a good track record. And once again, it is a dedicated carving knife. It has, of course, the primary blade. Uh, that is kind of this worn cliff and they're actually all worn cliffs but this is the largest of them and then on the opposing side is two smaller worn cliff carving blades so once again a fantastic knife for the dedicated use of carving so i do really enjoy this one if you guys can find the gec pocket carver it's not the easiest one to find in gec is notorious about making really awesome uh, kind of traditional slip joint knives and then they only make like 100 or 150 and then they just never make them again so i will say gec is known for that or great eastern cutlery but if you do happen to find a pocket carver they're usually reasonably affordable uh, they're made out of good quality components and most importantly they're a really good carving knife okay so instead of just telling you guys about a whole bunch of very expensive fixed blades. We are moving into the fixed blade category, but I wanted to start out with budget fixed blades. Now these budget fixed blades will honestly do, I would say 75 to 80% of what the more expensive ones will do. So if you are starting out and you're looking for the best bushcrafting fixed blades to get into, I would say it's a tie between the Mora Kunzbul, which is this knife shown here. Um, and this one is really great because it is a stainless option and a lot of these other options I will be mentioning are not really stainless. So if you are operating in a more humid or damp or wet environment, maybe the stainless steel is the way to go. Uh, generally, it's not my favorite, but the Kunzbull is made out of 12C27 Sandvik, which is just fine. It's an entry-level stainless steel, but definitely far from the worst. Um, aside from that, it does also have a kind of tapered secondary grind on the front half or portion of the blade that does make things such as skinning or game processing or natural resource processing easier because it makes that, uh, makes the spine of the blade, I should do it like this, much, much thinner around that area. So it gives you a little bit more flexibility and, uh, agile kind of an agile tip and belly of the blade and also less resistance when cutting though you still do have a full thickness kind of back end for batoning and more industrial tasks so overall this is not a full tang knife but it is still very strong and i own many moras and i think all but the mora garberg uh, are not full tang so i've never had an issue with uh, even the smallest of them the eldris you know breaking during batani and i've really tried to uh, you know test their test their abilities make sure that they aren't weak so that is the mora Kunzbull. it is a really fantastic knife that's you know hovering around that kind of golden size of around you know nine inches so next to that is going to be the condor pterosaur now Personally, if you ask me, I like the pterosaur a little bit more, and that's just because the ergonomics and the blade shape are a little bit more my style, and I don't know what magic they infused into the pterosaur to make this knife such a fantastic uh, feather sticking blade. This thing really curls wood like nobody's business, and it is a great carver. I've mentioned it in many videos. This is often the knife that if I'm trying to teach someone bushcrafting skills, this is the knife that I'll hand them because one, it's cheap, it can get damaged, and I'm not going to cry about it, but also two, it just works very well. And so if you're trying to teach someone the kind of uh, essential skills for bushcrafting, the pterosaur is a great place to start, not to mention it is full tang, so that is handy and useful. And like I said, it is also very comfy. And what's in, it's very affordable. These things are around $40 to $50, and for that, you're getting 1095 high carbon, 
for blade steel and you know let's get around 10 or sorry around nine inches of overall size so overall this blade just there's not a lot to complain about uh, really the only thing that i caution people with with the pterosaur is that there is no coating on any of this blade so as you guys can probably see here you know they left the natural steel finish on the actual um, non-ground part of the blade and of course the ground the ground part of the blade is just ground so that's kind of how they keep the costs low but do keep in mind that because that metal is just bare there's no protection you do have to be mindful with rust um, for that reason so do keep that in mind but the knife really is fantastic for that really low price point Okay, now we're stepping up into the top four, the best of the best, and this is if you have the money and you really do love bushcrafting or, you know, you want to take your tools to the next level, once again, you know, 80% of what you can do with a knife can be done with those cheaper tools. But if you want to close the gap and really maximize, these are some of the best knives that I've found to do that with. So the first one is the Falkneven F1. Now, Falknevens are getting a little bit more expensive, but still the F1 is right around the $100, $120 mark. And for that, you're getting a laminated VG10, which is a stainless steel. This is really the only other stainless steel option aside from the Conspool, but it is a full convex grind, which is not 100% my favorite, but it still is a very venerable edge, very tough and resilient to doing heavier duty tasks like batoning, not to mention Vulcan even makes their knives out of a very stout piece of steel. And of course it is full tang. So it, this thing is very durable. And I think the largest thing that the F1 has going for it uh, in comparison to its other competitors or other tools on the list is that because it has a rubberized thermal run handle similar to the more budget options it is very temperature neutral and so it is still grippy when cold it is still reasonably uh, warm when cold and so this is not the this is a handle that if you you know are holding this thing for long periods of time in extreme cold environments like it is now you are going to have a reasonably warm hand and it's not going to be the handle's not going to be sucking the heat out of your hand even if it has a glove or mitten on it so those are things to keep in mind aside from that uh, you know it really is a solid knife it is a little bit smaller I think this one's pushing more around the eight inch mark but over Overall, it is a really great, really hard to beat knife. And of course, the F1 has a fantastic track record being adopted by different militaries and once again, many, many private people, uh, whether they're bushcrafters, survivalists, or tactical uh, types of individuals. So really great track record with the F1 from that standpoint. Okay, stepping up the price a little bit more. Now we're going into the 200 and up kind of price range, but we are now looking at the Bark River Knives Bushcrafter. Now, this one is has to be on the list because even though it's not the most attainable knife anymore, the original Gen 1 Bushcrafter in CPM 3V is one of my go-tos. It's a general purpose knife that I know that if I don't really... if if I'm not sure what my exact intent or purpose for going into the wilderness is outside of bushcrafting, you know, I'm not sure what exact uh, crafts I'll be practicing, or if I'm trying to teach bushcrafting, the Bushcrafter is, by BRK, is my go-to. It's a really solid knife that does anything and everything I need it to do. It has, you know, the 5 30 seconds of an inch thick blade. It's around similar kind of to the F1 in that 8 inch mark, and it fits me like a glove and bushcraft or brks are known for their ergonomics the bushcrafter is no exception it is extremely comfortable to hold and it is a very durable blade it of course has a scandivex a uh, rather high scandivex grind on it and that makes it durable but yet very usable in a lot of regards so the bushcrafter by brk is on this list because it is one of my absolute go-to's has been for many years pushing close to a decade i think uh, i think at least eight at least seven years uh, i've been using the brk bushcrafter and it is just a fantastic knife i really do 
love this knife and it's hard to beat, but there are definitely some venerable contenders. Let's talk about them. Okay, so the next one is going to be the 3DK or Three Dog Knives or Knife uh, MAK or Multi Animal Knife. Now this was originally designed as a skinning knife here in Alaska for handling many different types of animals, preferably or most or with the greatest intent, things like bears, moose, caribou, those types of animals. But this knife, as the name kind of points out, is designed to handle a wide variety of tasks. It is generally a really good camp knife. Now, once again, it has the same thickness as the BRK Bushcrafter at 530 seconds, and it is a really great thickness in that regard. I think what really makes the MAK stand out and differentiate itself from the pack is the selection or kind of customizability of this knife. Now, the MAK itself is a set pattern by 3DK, but you can do a lot to this MAK. You can have them from factory grind the spine to sharpen it, and that's actually what I had them do. You could also have them round out the back of the tang to make that sharp and rounder. You could also have this knife chosen in many different handle options and several different steel options. I believe the steel options are M390, LMAX, K110, which is what this blade is made out of, and uh, Bowler N690, I believe. So, you know, depending on what you want, if you want more corrosion resistance, if you want more durability, uh, you can choose the blade that will work best for you. So you get this nice design, which is a totally solid, you know, multi-purpose blade design, but with the different functions and form that you need it to fit or fit. So if you need it to strike ferro rods, they can do that for you. If you need it out of a particular handle material or blade steel option for a particular operation or particular environment that you go into, they can also do that for you. So the MAK is a super customizable knife that can fit many different or expands its usability even more because of all of its options. So that is probably the coolest thing about the MAK, aside from, don't get me wrong, this knife is insanely, insanely comfortable to hold. It is really a good knife. I just think that what makes it really stand out from the pack is the fact that it has so many different options. You can even get different sheaths for it too. So that is the MAK by 3DK out of Anchorage, Alaska. I might be a little bit biased because they're the only Alaskan company on the list, but really if you do get an MAK, as I'm sure some of my subscribers that already have MAKs will chime in in the comments. They are really great knives. So don't make it seem like the ergonomics are poor, or I'm not trying to make it seem like the ergonomics are poor or anything. It is a really fantastic knife. Okay, so the last one, and definitely the most expensive one, is the JBK Layman. So this one is a semi-custom, I would say, if not full custom, knife made by JB Knife Works, and it's a pretty small operation, and once again, similar to some of these other knives, it's not the easiest to get your hands on, and I believe it's actually the smallest one on the, the list, I believe like around 7.8 or just under 8 inches, uh, it's right around there, it is a little bit smaller, but this one has to be on the list because it is downright one of the most comfortable uh, knives I have ever had held and used for bushcrafting and camp life. This thing is ridiculously comfortable. It also has a awesome tapered tang. Hopefully you guys can see there a little bit of that. And it has a really cool kind of uh, convex grind, but the convex grind also has a bevel to it. So this bevel, initially I was a little bit uh, pessimistic or I was uh, unsure about how this bevel would fare, being the fact that it is on a, uh, a convex ground knife. But the fact of the matter is that uh, this convex grind with the bevel really actually or the bevel really helps the convex grind out. It allows you to do things like feather sticking much better than on a normal convex grind. So this knife came together really well. And aside from that, this is a knife that is designed to be very precise, very agile, and very craft oriented slash skinning oriented. This is definitely, well, the smallest of all of them, definitely one of the more fine blades on the option, or definitely the finest blades of all of them. Now this one is made out of 8670, and it's a proprietary 8670 that JBK uses, and it's definitely a little bit different than 8670, but 
8670 is a fantastic tool steel that uh, has great edge retention and really will not let you down. It is designed to do work. Now, like I said, it is around $400, so it's the most expensive on the list, but if you do end up with a JBK Layman, you will not regret it. They are very, very incredible knives. So that is the last one on the list. Hopefully you've enjoyed the video. Hopefully you guys Hopefully you guys like this list and that it most importantly was helpful for you guys. As always, God bless and I'm out.